I'm Craig Slate. And I'm Edward Todd. And you're listening to The Fresh Crab. Welcome back, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. What's up, folks? <laughs> so, we are back here <laughs> in got? Anaheim with, well, let's just say we're at the Global Produce and Floral Show. Um, hosted by the International Fresh Produce Association, and we are now um, welcoming our, I would say our host. She's not really our guest. She's our host because she asked us to be here. Yeah. So <laughs> the, only reason, the only reason this exists is because of this lady here, so mm-hmm. let's that, just go with that. And we're yeah. so sure. glad you're here. <laughs> Trust me. So with us next, and our final interview of the day, um, before we wrap up, is Kathy Burns, CEO of International Fresh Produce Association. Mm-hmm. Kathy? Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, and well, thanks so much for investing a full day uh, to your podcast and to interviewing our members. It's been fantastic. So really appreciate you guys. It is our pleasure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, it's been a great time. We've had a great list of, of folks come through. We've had some, yeah, it's just been fabulous, right? Awesome. You know, I was fortunate enough to be on the show floor yesterday, you know, doing that part and seeing all the activity out there. But, uh, yeah, just... You've got some great members. Let me just tell you that. Very you blessed. I, I, think, I think we saw some really top ones today for sure. Great. But, uh, no, great members. Once again, I mean, you know, this, this, the venue's amazing. The production overall. I mean, the venue, the events. Um, I was, I wouldn't say surprised, but I was out kind of late the night before, and the Steve Wozniak breakfast session i kind of thought folks might you know sleep in yeah it was packed it was packed yeah Yeah, that was that was really cool to see yeah so let's first maybe start about just kind of the execution of the show Uh, i am so blessed to have a staff that you know addresses every detail sets the bar incredibly high we are definitely on brand in terms of our execution and that's what you're experiencing in the show in the education in the welcoming reception on what was it thursday night yeah, I think it was yeah, Thursday. Thursday night. Night. Um, yeah. I mean, it was pat- it was packed. Oh yeah. Um, and so the opportunity that the, the again just blessed with an incredible staff. Quite frankly, I just show up. <laughs> they, they they do everything yeah. and uh, they make it look seamless and effortless um, because they care. And this industry has a heart and soul like no other part of the store, no other part of the plate. And that shows up in spades at an event like this, or at the welcoming reception, at the education on the show floor. Um, your experience with the people that you interview, um, it's a really special industry, and, and you get reminded a thousand times over when you spend two days walking around talking to people that love what they do. Yeah. I've used your hugs, not handshakes, several times since we were last handshakes. Week. There were a lot of them <laughs> on that floor today, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. So much so, I'm losing my voice. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've had a couple of people in. I, you know, Michael was just in, yep. and he, voice-wise, said, look, my voice is kind of going. Uh, we had Raul Fernandez Great. in earlier. He also, you know, uh, his voice, I mean, yeah, it, it gets that way. It does. Right? It, you know, which is awesome. So, yeah. So, what are the numbers? Yeah, I don't know what the final number is yet, um, but I will tell you that I would say it's probably the highest buyer count, or pretty close, one of the highest buyer counts we've ever had. And, you know, I know people are always excited to hear the numbers, know what the numbers (laughs) are, but at the end of the day, and if you talk to the exhibitors, they don't care about what the total number is. What they care about is the quality of buyers Mm. that they're speaking with. And I, over and over and over again, I heard not only the breadth of buyers that were here, but the quality of buyers, the decision makers, the people that want to talk about strategically partnering with exhibitors about the future of their business, that was very, very different this year. Palpable, actually. Mm, right. Um, so that was fantastic. We had over, what, 1,200 exhibitors. Um, we had um, members from, or exhibitor, well, we had members or attendees from over 60 countries. So if you walked around, you should have heard a lot of languages uh, on the show floor. So that was very exciting. Um, so the the, uh, the quality, the number of buyers, the overall attendance. I mean, yesterday, if you were on the floor, mm-hmm. it was crazy. Um, oh, yeah. It was not stop crazy. And then it was constant. Personally, I like day two because then it's, it's, the, it's less phonetic. Right. Phonetic. And then you have the opportunity to have even more lengthy conversations with people that uh, stop by the booth and then 
some of the exhibitors get to go down and see the people in the business solution providers, so packaging and transportation and technology. Oh, my gosh, we had so much innovation and technology at the show this year. That was a very, very It definitely different looked end. different. I saw yeah. that. I, I wondered about, yeah, it looked like some different things that I hadn't seen over the years that, mm -hmm. that, that's going on, you know, with PMA and some of the, yep. the new ventures. Floral, the floral area looked oh. huge. It looked fabulous. It's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. Again, great number of floral buyers uh, that were on the floor. Um, they, that, those floral people, man, they rock it. I mean, those exhibits are amazing. Mm -hmm. They have the most coveted reception on Friday night. Um, they announced the Floral Marketer of the Year, who Aaron from HEB was honored with that award. Oh, but very there's, cool. They uh, they know how to they know how to bring it. They work hard and play hard. Those floral peeps, we love them. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I gotta tell you. So my 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 favorite was the uh, the deli. Um, I think they're out of Spain. Aren't, yeah. Aren't yeah, they out of Spain? Yeah. I yeah, think they might be. Yeah. Holy to you, what a salad bar. I know, huh? Right? I mean I'm looking I'm looking over there, I was like, so this is this is what you guys are giving out. You're giving that's <laughs> like I'm in line. And I mean I told Ed earlier, I was like, look, I built I built such a great salad, you would have wept. It was so beautiful. <laughs> and it literally it was amazing. That's awesome. You know what's so cool about this uh, particular event is, and you talk to exhibitors, they say this. They it's a coming out party for their new products yeah. and innovations. So the lead up to the show the journey to get there, not only in terms of how we prepare to execute, but how exhibitors talk about and kind of foreshadow the innovations that they're going to bring. Uh, that This show, there's no other show that has the innovation um, and the technology combination here that people really, really look forward to. So the surprise and delight uh, shows up in spades. It's a lot of fun. This yeah. is the produce fashion week. It's like it fashion is. week for produce. Hundred percent. You know, some people call it the the produce and floral New Year. I've heard it called the mm -hmm. produce and floral Super Bowl, the Disneyland of fruits, vegetables, and flowers. I mean, everyone's got their own little little mm -hmm. spin on I it. Like I like fashion week. I, I, I'll tell you, innovation, <laughs> innovation, and uh, and technology, but innovation in particular was uh, very palpable. Packaging innovation, product innovation. Um, you know, displaying and I mean, like it was everywhere you look. People were looking for new ways to increase consumption yeah. of fruits and vegetables and flowers. Well, and you know, and that's been a, a common theme to everybody we talk to. It's it's the theme of this show yeah. is really you know what are the things that we can be able to do because we've got to grow the consumption. I mean, as long as I've been in this business, it it's just seems like I mean what. Well, it, I'm not sure there has been, you know, significant. I mean, it's just been such a small amount of growth across mm -hmm. everything. How do how do we change the dynamic with that American consumer, right? How do we how do we get people eating more of this stuff? That's it's life changing. It's life saving. It's all those things. What 100%. we do, right? I mean, it, it's it's you know, and and everybody, you know, so so many of the people we talk to, we're all believers. But, connecting those dots. That's the challenge, Kathy. Yeah, I talked a lot about that during the state of the industry. I mean, our number one priority is growing consumption, hands down, period, full stop. We need more people to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables and buy more floral more often because ultimately they're going to be happier and healthier, yeah. period. So the vision's pretty simple, actually. Um, but I really ar articulated a three-part strategy. We're going to win by government relations, public relations, and consumer relations. And so advocacy is our members' number one priority, um, and it's their priority, and they expect it to be IFPAs, and we're, we're on it. Mm -hmm. But the way we're going to be able to do that and where we're at the disadvantage of other food groups is on grassroots advocacy. So the call to action uh, that I will have for the industry starting at SOI on Thursday and going forward is I need more people at the local level to join our grassroots advocacy effort. Because what the other food groups do is if there's an issue, they can activate that local level like that. Right. Talk to their co people of Congress, talk to the administration, talk to anyone to try to influence what's happening. And there's, so it's policy, for sure. It's marketing, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, it's making sure that the um, our products are integrated. They become a habit. There's access issues. Like, it's... If it was easy, we'd be doing it no, already. Yeah, you know? exactly. But it's multi-pronged for sure. But it's like a, sh it's like a okay. produce sheriff's posse, sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, and I, but I wonder too, right? So, so the advocacy, you know, is it because we're concentrated in certain parts of the world? You know, in other words, you know, 
look, I mean, the ma majority of the production comes right out of California. Mm -hmm. or it certainly comes off the West Coast, mm -hmm. right? If you, you go from Washington State down. Is it because, you know, the cattle guys are from coast to coast, right? Is it because, well, what do you think? We've got people that are advocates, but I mean, what are we missing? I mean, they just find other things to do and not get involved? I mean, yeah, I mean, we're punching below our weight, to be honest. Um, you know, we haven't mobilized a grassroots effort ever in specialty crops. Hmm. And so until you can get, because honestly, if you, again, if you think about other parts of the plate, if you can mobilize the um, grassroots efforts to talk to your members of Congress, to talk to your local leaders, um, and I think we've, we've, again, been punching below our weight, and until we can be more threatening, honestly, and yeah. more aggressive, and look, don't mess with the specialty crop industry because they, they're not gonna back down, and they're gonna make it really, really painful uh, for you. We haven't been in that position before, so part of it's being a little more bold our industry, mm. we're humble to a fault, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, hey, we grow fruits, vegetables, flowers, and plants. It's just what you do, what All we shucks. do. It's not a big deal. <laughs> it is a big deal. Yeah. It's a big deal. Oh, it's a huge deal. deal. I, I said, I mean, we, we're literally in the business that can, you know, change, it ch changes lives. Absolutely. And the good news is we've got some platforms to do that right now. we got the Farm Bill. Uh, we're fighting hard for uh, H-2A reform, immigration workforce mm -hmm. yeah. reform. We've got some initiatives going on against that. Nutrition, there's a lot happening in the nutrition space. Uh, climate, we're, we've got a $15 million climate smart grant that we are going to be um, you know, activating in the industry. So there's, there's lanes that are happening. We just got to go bolder, we got to go faster, um, and we've got to be more aggressive with our voice. We're the voice of authority. So on the in, uh, collectively, our members, right. now, IFPA and our members are the voice of authority on these topics and we have got to lean in and be at every table where food is being discussed. So what is the current status on the farm bill yeah. right now? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> okay. yeah. You'd like to find somebody who could tell you what that is? Well, we first need a speaker. Yeah, uh, exactly. That would be helpful. Yeah, you got. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, Congress is paralyzed, right? Yep. Or the House is paralyzed. So, uh, we hope. We really hope that things improve there because we have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, the farm bill's expired. Yeah. Right. Expired September 30th. So now some of the you know, some of the programs are continuing to be maintained. But once we flip the calendar year, it's going to start to be more painful. Some uh, in terms of some funding. Um, I know there's top talk of an extension. We're just, we have 15 or 16 marker bills already um, and that members of Congress has supported as a part, uh, in support of our industry. We've never been in a position of the farm bill that we've had that many marker bills this early in the process. So we are lobbying like crazy right now. We have 109 recommendations in our, our farm bill uh, from the Specialty Crop Farm Bill Alliance, which brings together um, honestly tens of, of organizations across the U.S. so that we go into uh, lobbying by here's specialty crops priorities and here's what we care most about and then we get members of Congress to really support a marker bill um, but I don't know about the timing. I, I if I was, if I, if yeah, I, could yeah, that, no, I, I probably I wouldn't be in this job. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's discouraging. Yeah, it, it is and you know now you're, you, cl you look at the clock, you're October has to be, you know, all the breaks The yeah, it's just, it's unfortunate. Everything's ground to halt, not to mention all the, the geopolitical things that are taking place. And uh, it's going to be a tough one. I mean, it, you know, and that, that's one that, uh, yeah, you, we definitely need some, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what we can do. Like I say, until they get a speaker, it doesn't really matter. They, well, we're all still, the grassroots in the world ain't going to change that. Yeah, but we're still we're still going after it. I mean, we are talking to staffers uh, of members of Congress. We're talk, speaking with members of Congress. Mm -hmm. um, the work continues, um, so we're not we're not hitting pause. We're still out there, very aggressively lobbying for the things that are most important to our industry. When it actually gets to the floor for a vote. Your guess is as good as mine. That's that what one. they'll happen, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, well, you know, that's D.C. You guys just got back to D.C. How was how was the D.C.? Very good conference. Yeah, thanks for asking. We um, we mobilized what 400 plus members. Um, we had some great. We had people come to us to our members and, and talk, and then we let loose 400 people to go up on the hill uh, and meet with members of Congress once again to educate them. 
I think that's another opportunity that we have from a grassroots perspective. It's one thing to go to the Hill and tell our stories, hugely important, hugely mm -hmm. important, especially for when our members do it. The grassroots opportunity is to have some members of Congress go out and actually kick some dirt, go into a processing uh, facility, go into watch a harvest happen, go to a retail store and see actually what happens to our product. Our product actually dies, you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it has a shelf life uh, that needs to be addressed. So the um, that so it's two prong. Like we need people to go to Washington. Conference was good. Um, you know, it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, in D.C. as you know, it's also a contact sport. <laughs> So you have to be there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good analogy for what it's like in D.C. You know, yeah, you know well, we, we talk about marathons. And it's worse than a marathon, no, no. I think. You know. <laughs> it is a contact sport. you got to be and, there. And you it's that for sure. you got to be face to face. But I think the real opportunity for our industry, once again, is to have members of Congress um, out in our fields, packing houses, processing plants, distribution centers, uh, retail stores, to see, like, this is how food gets on an American consumer's, consumer's plate. I think people forget, like it just appears yeah. there somehow. Yeah. It's a heck of a lot of work and oh, we yeah. need support. Yeah, Is that, I mean, more coordination with the state level? Is that maybe Definitely. what that looks like? Yeah, 100%. Again, um, you know, I know I sound like a broken record, but we've got to activate some grassroots efforts to be able to go to uh, the support at the state level to say, hey, I, need, I would love my members of Congress to come out and visit and then we can organize uh, around that to give them a full education. Um, because once they're educated and they understand, I mean, who's going to argue with fruits, vegetables, and flowers, really? Come on. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. In this day and age, Kathy, <laughs> I feel like people can find anything to argue about. And, and so, I, I don't know. I'd just be careful making that statement. Yeah, I guess oh, that's true. All right. Out. Who okay. should argue? <laughs> Who should is, yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. When, when Absolutely we, no. We'll go after that. those that do. How's oh, that? My, yeah, let's do that. So, <laughs> yeah, but, you, you know, and on the consumption side, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I mean, this, this last year, uh, you know, the, the PBH has mm -hmm. now come up under your umbrella. Yeah. Uh, you know, what, what kind of things you guys, because I, I really think that's a great consumer, that's the consumer vehicle, the direct consumer. I mean, what, what kind of things you guys doing over there with that group? And and you've got a great leadership team in there as well. Super so, I mean, exciting. Yeah. They are fantastic. I mean, we are so blessed uh, to have that team integrated now in part of IFPA. Um, we want have a plant and fruitandveggies.org to be the place for all things uh, produce and all things fruits and vegetables. So. I think the opportunity for the for both of those brands are actually to scale. Um, again, a little bit from SOI, I was saying that you know 75, only 25 percent of consumers know that you, half your plate should be fruits and vegetables. So 75 percent. We've been doing this for 10 years. 75 percent of consumers don't know that fruits and vegetables should be half the plate, and worse yet, only 10 percent are following the dietary guideline. So but those were campaigns that at one point existed, correct? And then they sort of aged out, and it's time to bring, bring them back or yeah. bring an iteration back, maybe? Yeah, I mean, we need to, we're investing in it, so we have a great opportunity. I mean, that's our direct link to the consumer. Yeah. So to have have a plan, or fruitandveggies.org, and being able to have the content that's relevant, relevant we're amping that up mm -hmm. to, um, you know, social media influencers. There, there were hundreds of them probably here today uh, and you know they want cooking tips they want um, ideas around gut health what should I be eating for my gut health probiotics right. all those things but what they want most is ideas on how to consume more fruits and vegetables it's right in our wheelhouse so the, we're on the tipping point I really do believe this guys that we're on the tipping point of making some real magic happen on the advocacy front so that's you know when I talked about GR PR so getting more aggressive with consumer media. We've been connected with NPR and CNN and Reuters and the Associated Press in order to tell our story. Here's the problem, is a lot of what we, we're, we, you know, we have the white hats, we've got the sexy products. Yeah. You know, it's, it's how do you create a burning platform message around something that's really good for you. Yeah. You know? Ever, the media always wants to talk about all the bad things that are happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna figure out how do we create a narrative where we're saying, like, if you don't eat fruits and vegetables, you could get cancer 10, 20, 30 years ago. You will get diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean make those I you mean they, those are the kind of statements we we've gotta get to the point where, you know, 
just in general for me, it's not, not just about our industry, but just in general, we've got to get more to a situation where we tell people, so look, you're accountable, right? At the end of the day, you're accountable. And what you put in your body, that's your call. 100%. And, 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 and you're the one, it's, it's relevant in terms of um, what medications you're on. It's relevant in terms of are you walking on your own or are you having to be assisted? I mean, you as an individual have those. I feel like almost as a country or as, as just we, we don't really want to hang responsibility on people. It's like realistically you, you make a choice. And, you know, we talk about the stuff being healthy. Mm-hmm. Stuff tastes good, I'm telling you. So the salad I ate yesterday, <laughs> man, it was stinking. It, I mean, amazing. But well, it, 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 and, and it was a choice of about... I don't know how many things were on that salad bar, so it wasn't like, you know, you, you, there may have been something people don't like. Okay, fine. There's so many choices on there. If you, we, we just, but we get, we get into a mindset, I don't know, the quick gratification, the things like that. And yeah, they're, anyway. they're, they're hang ups to a certain degree. I mean, we get hung up with a lot of what we eat, right? And people don't realize the fruits and vegetables we eat, they're great raw, they're great. You know, cook. They're great as part of dishes. They're de- great by themselves. I mean, there's all these different ways we can consume. Um, yeah. These guys are tired of hearing about it, but I just went to Spain for the first time, <laughs> oh, and I was great. super impressed with just the way they eat. Yeah. You know, whole foods. It's very pure. Real foods, very pure. I came back to kind of a slap in the face, and now I'm. Uh, it's just I had heard that I would maybe see things a little bit differently, and it was it really impact it really impacted me. Yeah. Well, look at what happened with Ozampec. You know, Ozampec was supposed to be a, a pill that treated type 2 diabetes Correct. or diabetes more generally, and it was then positioned as a weight loss drug. It ended up being on FDA's drug shortage list. I mean, that mm. <laughs> And so uh, the other thing I just heard again, I talked about this at the state of the industry, Weight Watchers has now said we're going to take the the drug route. We're going to prescribe drugs right. in order for you to lose weight. It's it's well, and of course, I mean, there, we could we could go off on oh, a whole could. tangent, but you know, of course, Oprah came out, which is the Weight Watchers. Yes. In fact, I think she may even be a, a, a major stockholder, but it doesn't matter. She's she's <laughs> kind of their spokesperson, but she first came out with probably what her honest opinion is, right? Mm-hmm. And she's somebody that certainly battled weight yep. issues, right, and knows it all too well, and. She was like, mm, I'm not necessarily a big fan of the, the drug option. But, unfortunately, in this world of money talks and that, that kind of stuff, anyway, uh, so, she, and she, she walked that back. And, unfortunately, she, uh, she walked that back. And, but, uh, yeah, I had the same reaction to me. It's just like, oh, my gosh. It's like for crying out loud, you don't need that, right? You need to put down the donut. That's it. Put down, quit doing that, you know. You know go eat a salad. There's so, you know, d- your choices are yours. It, you don't need to have a drug to, to fix type 2 diabetes. Yeah, and I think, you know, to your point about simplicity, and it's just easier, you know. Uh, some people take the, you know, some people choose to, you know, again, um, focus on the P-H-A-R-M versus the F-A-R-M for solutions. <laughs> and so we're, I mean, we, we talk about risking other sides of the plate or maybe we're, uh, you know, really fighting against junk food. Pharmaceuticals coming. So we've got to be able to, one, get more yeah. aggressive and bold because we have got, I mean, there's nothing better than breaking bread or eating fruits and vegetables, I should, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, together because it's, it's cultural, it's community, it's, you know, it's this, it, there's everything great about it. And we've got pharmaceuticals coming at us and that's going to be unacceptable. Yeah, yeah it is. And, and like you, you said the statement, we, we've got as an industry, we've got to start to get bold. We've got to start mm-hmm. to make statements like you, you said. Well, you, you know, we, we, can't, we can't necessarily say, you know, we will stop you from getting cancer. But we can certainly say that romaine's not going to, inc- it's not going to uh, escalate or have the potential to cause cancer. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's very likely going to help you prevent it. But even if you didn't say prevent, it's certainly not going to go towards it. These other things, sugars and, you know, th- there's a ton of stuff that, yeah, you eat enough of it, you do enough of it, it will absolutely increase your cancer. Absolutely. Your chance. Yeah. And so, for, I mean, I think we're going to have to get a little bit more bold on that message and create the burning platform that, you know, yeah, you may feel fine today, <laughs> but if you don't change your eating habits, 
your life is going to be very, very different 10, 20, 30 years from now. You know, what we, you know, this is, we, we should, maybe it's the campaign, you know, how the cigarettes, how they have, like, yeah. you know, the people with the bad lung and stuff. Or it's the, it's the fire and brimstone versus <laughs> the is. everybody's, but, you know. But maybe, maybe we, maybe we just have people, hey, if you don't come and eat this, then this will be you in the, in the hospital bed or not being able to get around. I mean, it's serious. I mean, that's, that's the, it's the counter. In other words, they, you know, don't smoke or you'll get lung cancer. Well, you know. Don't eat this, and you very likely will wind up uh, incapacitated at some mm. early age yeah. kind of a deal. So, so again, I think w what I what I love about our strategy is that we are we're attacking the policy. Yeah, we're attacking the PR, um, and that will be both in terms of making sure that we're advocating for our industry 365 days a year and getting in consumer press. And then we're and then we're activating on the consumer level, whether it's fruit and veggies dot org, have a plant, some of the, you know, the kind of the marketing campaigns sure. that you're talking about. It has to. We have to address all three prongs of that strategy in order for us to make meaningful change. Yeah, I I agree. And uh, in this show and everything we do, we're we're up against the clock, and I know you've got to get on, but. Uh, yeah, it's it's a blast coming to this. It's a blast to see everybody. But the reality of it is, is you know, at the core of all of this and all we're trying to do, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big, deep meaning in what we do in this business, right? Yeah. I mean, we're literally changing lives or the potential to, to, to change and affect lives. And it's not always easy. <laughs> no, not no. easy. And, and, uh, if it was, everybody would do it. Yeah. That's right. But, you know, it's, it's good to be part of something that actually does have that you know, in, 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 its, uh, in its quiver, if you will, or whatever. It's just to, to know that we're part of, like I say, a life. We, we can improve so many lives, and we can make such a difference. And, you know, it's great to be part of it. Thank you. You're, you know, and you run a fabulous organization. You mentioned the execution. Mm -hmm. Your team does a fabulous we job do. of executing this. Awesome. Yeah, the, what we've been able to experience here for Ed and I, but just, you know, the show itself, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big dude. Yeah, well, Not we appreciate that. I, um, you know, at the end of the day, we need to get people to eat more fruits and vegetables and buy more flowers more often. Um, we are laser focused on that um, activation. We've got some things in the hopper like scaling produce prescriptions, which is another program mm -hmm. that we think has real merit and promise. You know, let's fight pharmaceuticals by prescribing fruits and vegetables yeah. versus a pill. Uh, so there's a lot of things that are give us a ton of hope that things are going to change. It's going to take work. Yeah. It's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. But easy was never the point. No, you that, know, for Changing sure. the lives of the health of America is the point. Mm -hmm. And we're committed to do that. And honestly, it's through partnerships like these, um, people that care enough that have, I mean, you have passion, your purpose, the belonging of something bigger than what just the two of you do individually. It doesn't go unnoticed. So thanks for the the support always um, and getting the message out because this, we need to do more of this. Yeah, and that and that's for us. We're going to keep trying to push that because Appreciate it certainly that. has changed our lives. And you know, and that's one of those things. I mean, it's the best testimonials, right? Is 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 the people that's lives changed, exactly. right? And you know, and that's for me what hopefully for everybody else, right? It's the more of us that have okay. our lives changed that become willing to get out and talk about it and push it. So. And Absolutely. challenging our own people to walk the walk as well. I mean, the reality is, you know. We don't always do it, but we try. Yeah. Um, but just being conscious of it and, and walking the walk is, is a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, like I say, fantastic show. Congratulations. Appreciate that. And uh, we look next forward. Next year, did we say it off Atlanta. camera? Or? No, Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta yep, is next we'll be in year. Atlanta next year. And then uh, we didn't get to all the great things you got coming up. But the next That's big good. event you got coming up is the, when's your next uh, gathering of the minds, if you will? Yeah, so we've got, you know, we kick off a couple of leadership programs. They actually kicked off uh, here, and they'll go through a, a year long um, development program, which is fantastic because we need to prepare those next generation of leaders, both yeah. at the middle manager level and the executive level. So that's happening right now. We've got the first quarter, we've got a few couple floral events. Um, we, we will have a booth at Berlin, uh, Fruit Logistica Berlin. So that's a great opportunity for us to connect with our international members. Right. We do an, an executive leadership summit there. Uh, and then our Washington conference, we've moved from September up to June. That's right. That's I heard that that was changing. Point. Uh, June that is 10th cool. through the 12th, I think. Um, but it, it gives us some separation from this event, quite mm. frankly. Right. And June's a very good time to be in Washington lobbying. So I am really, really excited about that. That's, that's really uh, cool. I know that's second quarter, but 
I need to, people need to put it on their calendars now. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure, because, yeah, that's, it doesn't sound, I mean, it sounds like it's a ways away, but this stuff moves quick. Quick. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, Kathy, thank you very much, and appreciate thank you, Thank IFPA. you for having us. Yeah, thanks, thanks for thanks the support. IFPA. We appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Really and appreciate everybody that was you. behind the scenes making this happen, your team, for sure. So. Yeah. yeah, appreciate you both. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Eddie B.